We've talked before about how when we're talking about the field radiated by um, an antenna, it's got some function of just angle times the spherical propagation factor. Now, when people say radiation pattern, that term is actually pretty ambiguous because it doesn't tell you how it's normalized. And there are a lot of different things that they could be referring to, but really what they would just want to know is what is the angular dependence? of the radiation from that antenna. Radiation pattern sort of doesn't care how it's normalized and only just says, what is the angular dependence? So it's not really a specific technical term. There are other terms that you can use when you do want to be specific and technical. For instance, you can talk about the radiation intensity. Um, your book uses F for that. I've also seen capital U used, but F is fine. So if we're using F of theta and phi as the radiation intensity, it is defined as R squared times the magnitude of the time average pointing vector, which you remember, this is the radiation power density. But by having this r squared in the front, we're removing all the r dependence from it. And so that'll only be a function of angle. You can also express that as, as I wrote above, that electric field term, magnitude squared divided by 2 eta. Those two things are the same. Both of them get you the radiation intensity, which is only a function of angle. This isn't normalized at all. It tells you the amount of power per square angle per steradian um, that is being radiated by your antenna. Now there's a couple of different ways to normalize this if that's what you want to do. One, you could just normalize uh, this by its maximum value. So you could say a normalized radiation pattern is f of theta and phi divided by the max value of f. That would get you a normalized radiation pattern. So its max value would be 1, because then you'd be dividing the maximum value of f by the maximum value of f. The thing is that this doesn't really tell you a lot about how the antenna is radiating. It tells you the shape, but by normalizing it to itself, um, it's less informative. So a lot of the time, people like to use directivity, which is that same f normalized by the average value of f. And let's talk a little bit about the average value of f. The average value of f so that's the average radiation intensity, is equal to the power radiated divided by the total solid angle of a sphere, which is 4 pi. which is equal to the radiation intensity for an isotropic radiator. With the same 
radiated power. So we define this sort of reference radiator, this isotropic radiator, um, that has the same total power radiated, but instead of having this angular variation in the radiation pattern that might look something like that, it's just perfectly spherical. So if your antenna that you're evaluating also is an isotropic radiator, it's going to have directivity equal to 1 at all angles. Otherwise, in some places it's going to be less than 1, and in some places it's going to be more than 1. It's kind of like if you have a balloon with a finite amount of air in it. If you squeeze the balloon, the balloon will get smaller on one side and bigger on the other side, but you didn't change the total amount of air. That's kind of how you can visualize directivity. You have the same amount of power, but directivity quantifies how much you're concentrating it in one direction over another direction. It also tells you an important fact, and that's that you can't have high directivity in every direction. Directivity is always going to look like this, where you're going to have maybe one direction where you have a lot of directivity and another direction where your directivity is very low. And your isotropic radiator, by comparison, is going to look something like that. So you've got the same total power and different angular distributions. Or different angular dependence. It's all, it all depends on how you want to spend that total amount of power that you have to radiate. A lot of the time when we're talking about the directivity of an antenna, people will just supply one number. What they're referring to is the max directivity. So if it's not a function of angle, they mean the max value. And that max value, um, the max value of directivity has some interesting properties. It doesn't really have an upper limit. Although the max value of directivity is related to the size of the antenna. It does have a minimum value. It's impossible to have the maximum directivity of your antenna be less than 1. And that's for the reason that I sketched out up here. It can be less than 1 in some places. Directivity can be less than 1 in some places. But then it also has to be greater than 1 in some places because the average power has to average out to this dotted line of the average power of the isotropic radiator that you're referenced to. So directivity is one way of normalizing the radiation pattern. We also have gain which is like directivity, but goes one step further. Instead of being the radiation intensity divided by um, P rad over 4 pi, it is the power supplied to the antenna divided by 4 pi on the bottom. So once again, we're dividing by the radiation intensity for an isotropic radiator. But this time, the radiated power of this isotropic radiator is the power available to the antenna, meaning that the isotropic radiator 
is lossless and the antenna is not. Remember that the power supplied to the antenna, some of it gets spent in actually radiating and some of it gets spent on ohmic losses in the antenna materials and doesn't make it out of the antenna. So if we're talking about gain, so gain can also be written as the antenna efficiency. Your book uses xi for that, which is not a letter I'm great at writing, but I'm doing my best, times the directivity. So this is the efficiency of the antenna, um, which is equal to the radiated power divided by the total power. We're going to talk more about that later, but I want you to know what the efficiency is defined as so that we can talk about it in the context of gain. So this means that gain doesn't necessarily, because of this efficiency term, have the same limits as directivity does. You could have a max gain less than one if your antenna has an isotropic pattern but is not lossless then your gain your max gain would be less than one it's actually really hard to make an isotropic radiator so that might not ever actually happen um, but mathematically it's possible 